As it's been a whole three weeks since I last released some Primus related content on this channel, I thought it would be a good time to expand out my Primus kill team once again. In my kill team, there are still a few specialisms which I haven't yet covered, so as I look to fill out the full 20-man roster, I thought I'd add a couple of these in. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you some ideas on how to convert a Zealot and a Medic Specialist for your own Primus teams. I started with my Zealot, Audius Drisk. To take full advantage of the Specialist bonus combat abilities, I wanted a melee-focused loadout. Sticking within the Primus options available to me, I settled on an Intercessor Sergeant. But to benefit from the more dynamic poses of them, I began with an Assault Intercessor. I removed the components required to build the torso and legs and cleaned up the parts of any mold lines. As I have done with all of my other kill team members, my first modification was to remove the Aquila from the chest. I used my scalpel to first shave away small chunks, slowly removing the symbol bit by bit. The trick here is to not try to remove too much in one go. Doing so requires more force, and the more force you have to exert with your cuts, the more likely you are to slip and have an accident. But once the bulk of the Aquila had been removed, I then held the blade flat against the surface and used it to scrape away some of the remaining areas on the chest. Once the chest had been scraped smooth, I could then assemble the torso and the legs together. The Zealot Specialism can cover a range of different things. It can be used to represent a fighter who is driven by religious fanaticism, or it could be used for a warrior who has been whipped up into a frenzy by combat drugs. As my kill team is of the Raptors, a chapter known for their pragmatism, I decided to depict this as a superhuman level of grit and determination to complete their mission, even in the face of overwhelming odds. But getting something as abstract as this onto the model was a little tricky. So, I imagine that Audius had sustained a great deal of damage in a previous fight, but rather than being incapacitated, he picked himself up and jumped straight back into the fight and continues to do so. This was much easier to model and involved adding a great deal of battle damage to his armor. With my scalpel, I cut out a series of fine V-shapes into the chest. These were linked together to create a series of fractures. These cuts were widened out and deepened until there's a lattice of cracks had been added across the right-hand side of the torso. In addition to this, I also made a few cuts in the right side of the collar so that it would match up with the damage on the chest. If you've seen my recent Power Armor Stud video, then you will already be familiar with Molecular Bonding Studs. They are basically fancy space rivets and are used to make quick battlefield repairs to Power Armor. These were added by drilling some half mil deep holes using a 1mm drill bit. Some superglue was then added to each of the holes, and I finished off by placing some 1mm diameter ball bearings into each of them. They should sit about halfway into the surface to create the look of a rivet. As I was already adding battle damage to the armor, I decided to skip ahead and repeat the same process on a shoulder pad. I focused this to the right hand side of the pad so that when I added it to the right arm, it will sit towards the front of the model, following on from the previously added damage. With the damage done, I brought out the drill bit and the ball bearings again and added a few studs to the shoulder too. Now that the damage was complete, Audius now looked like he'd taken a severe beating, but had carried on with his mission nonetheless. Even with extensive damage to his armor, he got himself patched up and carried on with the fight. One thing that my squad was lacking was plasma weaponry. By limiting myself to Primaris, I had severely reduced my capacity to access these power armor killers. As I will be running Audius as an intercessor sergeant, he does have access to a plasma pistol, which is better than nothing. Interestingly, as of prior Nexus, an Intercessor Sergeants replace their bolt rifle with the plasma pistol and retain their bolt pistol, so naturally I wanted him to be wielding them both, which would help his Zealot stylings nicely. Most Primus bolt pistol arms are right-handed, but there is one within the Hellmaster set which is left-handed instead. This was paired nicely with a plasma pistol that came from the Assault Intercessor kit. Once the arms are in place, I attach the previously modified shoulder pad to the right arm and a regular pad to the left. As with my previous kill team members, I opted to continue the theme of enhanced squad based communications by equipping this model with the infiltrator power pack rather than the standard intercessor one. 
To take full advantage of the extra attack and the extra point of strength that Zealots can generate on the charge, I chose to outfit Audius with a power sword. Both his hands were already carrying weapons, so I needed a sheath blade instead. Finding a blade that wasn't being carried proved tricky, and the only blades I could find were much too ornate for the more utilitarian approach that I was taking with the kill team. To get around this, I opted to use one of the incredibly long blades from the Mark IV Space Marine kit. These blades kind of have that machete-like size and appearance to them, making them perfect for this squad's style. With most of the model assembled, it was now time for some handy storage bits. Like the rest of the model, I went to town adding various size pouches and grenades around the model's waist to the backpack and across the chest too. These were sourced mainly from Primus kits, but there are plenty of options within the Firstborn Space Marine kits to use as well. The only remaining part to add was the head. Following on with the whole zealot aspect, I initially thought about using a shouting head from the many Space Marine heads available, but I didn't feel like this was intimidating enough. So I took a leaf from the Reavers book and chose to use one of their helmetless heads instead. But this wouldn't be glued to the model just yet, as I intended to keep it separate for painting. With Audius complete, I could begin work on the team's medic, Kaz Lassitus. As the only Primus model capable of taking the medic specialism, I built Kaz around the Helix Adept variety of Infiltrator. So naturally, I started by removing the parts required to build an Infiltrator's legs and torso from the sprue. Like before, I cleaned up the components and shaved away the symbol from the chest before scraping it smooth. Finally, I could assemble these together. While the Helix Adept exists as a unit option for infiltrators, there are no options present for it in the multi-part kit. There is a model in the Vanguard stock collecting set, but unless you want the rest of the box, you will need to kit bash your own. I began with the communicator arm from the infiltrator set, but I couldn't use it as is because my kill team's leader already had one. To repose the arm, I began by removing the communicator from the rest of the arm. I used my saw to make a cut on the edge between the elbow plate and the communicator. Once separated, I cleaned up the cut with my knife. So that the arm would be held down to one side of the model rather than being held up, I took one of the spare arms from the infiltrator kit and used my saw once again. I cut it in the same location, just below the elbow plate so the forearm was removed. This was then cleaned up with my scalpel. I then glued the communicator to the upper arm and compared this against the torso to check that the angle looked correct, but I didn't attach it just yet. I still needed to convert the communicator into a Narthesium, and it would be easier to do this first. All I really needed for this was a large needle and a cutting tool to allow the Helix Adept to break through power armor. These were easily sourced from some of the Tempesta Scion medic equipment. I used my sword to separate the chainsaw blade and needle from the rest of the pistol, cutting just behind where the chainsaw blade starts to flare out. Once separated, I cleaned and flattened out the cut. This needle and blade combo was then glued to the flat surface of the communicator's arm. The area was pretty much spot on size-wise, so I didn't need to make any further adjustments. Once attached, the whole arm was then glued to the torso. Infiltrators carry bolt carbines, but there aren't any right arms that carry the bolter in just the one hand within their kit. Fortunately, the Reaver kit does have this. This was glued to the torso, and I followed this up with the left shoulder pad as well. The backpack I used for this model was the same Infiltrator backpack as before, which made sense as this fitted in nicely with the rest of the team and was also the default backpack for this type of unit anyway. Next up was the equipment, and I still wasn't quite done with raiding the Tempesta Science Kit just yet. The medic from that set carries a large case, emblazoned with a medical symbol, that would be perfect for not only continuing Kaz's medic theme, but it would also fit nicely in with the equipment laden feel of the team. The case came attached to the arm, so I clipped this away and trimmed at the top of the little. Finally, the case was glued to the right hand side of the model. Following on from the case, I began to attach a range of various size pouches. These were attached to any available space around the waist, followed by a couple of the smaller pouches on the chest. The final step in building Kaz Lassitus was to choose a head. As I had done with some of the original five members, I chose to use an eradicator head. The goggles and the extra bit of fabric around the neck massively increased that tactical style that the kill team had. 
But before I could attach the head, I need to make a few trims around the outside of the head. This particular head was designed to fit a different kind of attachment, so I reduced the width a little and tested the fit as I did so. Once I was finally happy with the fit and the pose, I could glue the head into place and all that needed to be done then was to paint both of these guys up. And here we have the two new members of my Primus only Raptor Kill Team, Audius Drisk and Kaz Lassitus, which brings the total roster up to 9 models, so a little under halfway there. But with the only specialisms left to depict, being a veteran and a demolition, I still have plenty of room to fill out the remaining number with some nice variety. If you haven't already done so, be sure to check out my previous two conversion guides for the rest of the team. Also, if you're interested in how I painted these, I will be releasing a guide on my painting technique very soon. As always, it was great to tackle a couple more Kill Team members, and there will be more guides to come in the future. So if you're enjoying these Kill Team kit bashing videos, please do leave me a like along with the suggestions for future members or other Kill Team builds that you'd like to see me tackle in the future. And with that, the final thing to say is a massive thank you to my supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Stuart Smith, Jeremy Kaup, Jake, Douglas Wilson, Daniel Dowling, Raphael Beiruthi, Lyconian Primarch, and Casper Strand. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee or you just use the affiliates links. Then your help is what keeps this channel alive, and it's what allows me to buy the kits required to build these kinds of conversions for you. If you would like to help me out, then you can check out my description for all of those relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Mm -hmm.